Good evening, bariatric family, all of my sisters out there. Hope some of you guys are able to catch this uh, video live. This is me, Lacey, and I'm so glad to be with you guys. It's Saturday night. I'm here in Michigan. It is snowing like crazy. It is nuts outside right now. We have about 10, 12 inches of snow. It is absolutely nuts. It is so cold, but it's time to talk, okay? Um, my little YouTube page is called Fruit and Seed. That's kind of what I call it because I have some fruit in my life. I have some things that I've done, some things that I've tried, some things that I've learned and that are really uh, working, bearing fruit. And so I have the opportunity to give some of that stuff a seed to you guys. So that's my intent. So I'm going to get right into it. As the title said, I think I put it on there. Why is this so hard? It was just a question that happened to come across my mind. Give me a thumbs up, a heart, something. Let me know that you that girl. I need to know, okay? Anyway, I was thinking about this myself. Let me get my little notebook together. I was thinking, man, why is this so hard? I don't like to use uh, that particular word hard because I'm I'm a, I'm a word fanatic. I love words. Words are so powerful and it's so um, incredible and so critical that you choose your words correctly because your words give birth to things. So if you choose words just haphazardly or just without giving much thought to it, you can actually sow a seed and reap a harvest of something that you really didn't want just by speaking the same words. So, but that word kind of came up in me. Why is this so hard? Then I got the answer. You want to know what the answer is? I thought, man, why is this so hard and then the answer came because this way of living this way of eating compared to the way we used to live and eat this is so hard because we were so out of control we were so out of control and now we are having to do the work to turn this boat going in the right direction we were going in the wrong direction for so long but the tripped out part of it is we were going in the wrong direction but that wrong direction was our norm i'm gonna say that again because that's so good that wrong direction that wrong perspective the way we ate the way we lived the way we processed emotions or didn't process emotions the way we ate all times of the day or night that was our norm our norm was absolutely out of control and so now what we're trying to do is actually go in the right healthy direction and remember you have had more time in the old system, the old way of thinking, the old way of living, that obese thinking, you live there longer than you've been living in freedom. So we've got to be patient. I need somebody to say to themselves, I have to be patient. Hi, Erica. Thank you for joining me. Erica, you need to tell yourself you got to be patient. It doesn't matter how long you've been in this process. Some guys have 10, 12 years, 20 years. Those guys, now we could take and we can learn something from those guys. Even the guys that are three, four years out and they will tell all of us the same thing. We've got to be patient with ourselves in this kind of learning. We have to relearn. Now we're coming to the place and we're putting new boundaries in. Erica, eight years in the process. So she knows so much more than I do. Girl, you better teach me something. I'm for real, okay? Be patient. Hey, Kim, be patient. We got to be patient. We've been eating and thinking and living wrong for so long. And now we have a new boundary put in place, right? We have a new pouch. We have a new tum-tum. But the old mindset, oh my goodness, the old mindset is still there saying, look, I don't know what you're going to do, but three ounces is not working for me. That's what the mind is saying, but the new tummy is like, no, girl, I didn't had enough. 
Don't give me no more. But the mind is like, yeah, we going to go. We going to do this. The new, the old mind, excuse me, the old mind or the fat brain, or I call it the brat is saying, oh, I've been running things for too long. Oh, Lacey, you think you're going to eat four ounces of meat and be done? Oh, I've been running things for too long up in here. That's what the brat is saying to me. I've been running things for too long. You ain't going to come up in here with your new list and your new rules and your new boundaries and your new little tiny tummy and try to tell me what to do. <laughs> All right, I, I took it too far right there. <laughs> but anyway... We just have to realize, we all have to come to the conclusion that I've been living the obese standard for much longer than I've been living free. And since that is the case, I need to slow my roll. Say, slow your roll. Talk to yourself. I mean, Erica, you can help us. Say, slow your roll. Take a deep breath because it's going to be okay. Now, this can be the detriment is if we allow the brat, the fat brain, the one that don't want to get a grip up in here to begin to rule us, to begin to tell us what we are and what we are not going to do. I'm going to share through some notes over the past uh, few videos that I've done, kind of refresh you guys. All these videos are available, so you're more than welcome to look through this page and you'll be able to find them. This is so much more um, a, a love of mine because I really want to, to bless you guys. I want to keep all of us motivated and encouraged. And believe it or not, I go back and watch my own videos and say, oh, yeah, you said that, so you got to live by two. Okay, Miss Thang. Anyway, okay. So last week, I believe it was. Hmm. Was it? It was Christmas, around Christmas. Yeah, that was last week already. I posted a video entitled You Passed the Test. Just the fact that we've gone through this process, just the fact that we realize and we're recognizing that my former pattern of eating has been out of control gives us the ability to start to do something. Oh, isn't that like the first step in recognizing that you need help? Is that I need help? You be the first one to raise your hand in the meeting, right? You be like, um, I got a question because I got an issue. That's the first step, realizing that there is something amiss. There is something that I'm not getting. But the tripped up part of it is, is that we didn't realize how out of control and how off course our life was until some of us was up over up over 300 pounds up over 350 400 and and we have a show that's going to come back on in a few weeks my 600 pound life and here the guys are up over 600 pounds but guess what i don't look at any of them in disdain why because the same mentality that's pushing them was pushing me the only difference is a few pounds. Come on. It's the same mentality. It's the same struggle. It's the same emotional, compulsive pushers on the other side pushing us. It's the inability to process emotions. It's the inability to deal with hard issues. That I found the outlet. That we found the outlet through eating. Eating became our drug. So if you want to admit it or not, this might not be for everybody. But if you want to admit it or not, I will proudly say I am in recovery. And this is one of the things I do to maintain my recovery. Is it a challenge? Yeah, it is. Why? Because remember, you've been living in the obese standard a whole lot longer than you've been living free. You've got this little rules and regulations from the doctor and the nutritionist. I mean, how many of us in former times had a nutritionist tell us what to and what not to eat? Come on. How many of us got mad when mama tried to tell us? When our brothers and sisters tried to tell us? Erica said, yep, mm -hmm. you are a part of the clean plate club. And guess what? You ain't getting no dessert until after you eat all of your food. What did that birth in us? What did that seed on the inside of us? Then the rewards 
that was that was used perpetuated by food if you do this we're going to get ice cream if you do this and guess what y'all somebody say what it's still perpetuated now you don't have the obese people at the restaurants you have the thin beautifully immaculate women they're the ones drinking the beers in the commercial they don't show the aftermath they don't show the years of doing this they just show how beautiful and gorgeous and glamorous they are right but we know the truth we know the truth say i know the truth we know the truth, so we can't view things the way we used to. Okay, so, all right, note number two, remember not to live a new life under an old standard. So now that we are living as bariatric women, we have to live by a new standard. In other words, we can't think the old obese way. I can't go around with the mentality that can't nobody tell me anything. That's the old obese standard. The old obese standard told me, you grown, can't nobody tell you nothing. You can eat a Whopper at 3 in the morning if you want to. That was the obese standard. Now, the new healthy, new us standard says there has to be a limit. There's boundaries. There's limits. There, there, there's this, this beautiful package of things that you can have. But then there has to be this, this list of stuff that you can't have or that you decide that you can't have. Because nobody's going to make you eat right. That's 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 you. And we can stretch our pouches out or we can regain and go back to where we were. But that happens because of following the old standard that's still back there. Remember, you were living, we were living, I was living under the old standard a lot longer than I've been living free. Maybe about a year and a half, two years, maybe, maybe. But I lived 32 years back there. OB standard. No, you ain't telling me what to do. I'm going to eat donuts when I want to. I'm going to eat chips when I want to. That was the old standard. The new standard says there are certain things you can and cannot do. But the key here, my sisters, is to get peace about it. One of the things that this journey can award us is the ability to focus and the ability to gain peace. Hey, Miss Luann, we got to gain peace, Luann. I have to be at peace without eating potato chips. I could kill some chips. I had to get to a place of peace to where I understand I couldn't handle them then. So what would make me think I can handle them now? That everything in moderation, I believe that that can be a a license for illegal eating for some people. Now, if you never had an issue with chips, help yourself. But me, I can't do chips in moderation because I had an issue with it. For an alcoholic, they can't do wine coolers in moderation. So why would we why why would we tell ourselves that, but not tell an alcoholic that, not tell a crack addict that? Oh, you can have a wine cooler. No, you can't. You are an alcoholic. You still have that propensity and that tendency in you. One drink away from falling off the wagon. One drink away from drinking full time again. I, I have to admit to myself, I'm one potato chip away from eating a whole bag. It's a slider food too. So I could eat a whole bag. Probably in my tummy wouldn't fill it. But I would see all the carbs and all the fat and all the calories. Come on, let's just be real. Develop your list. What is the list of things that you know? You already know. I'm talking about it. You know exactly what it is that you can't handle. It might be donut holes. You know what? I had an issue with chewing gum. Girl, let me tell you. Now, you know you got an issue with gum if you laying in bed at 3 in the morning and you dreaming about a piece of double bubble gum. <laughs> you got an issue if you are laying in bed dreaming and thinking about chewing a piece of bubble gum. That's an issue. So one day I was going to get... Karen says, one cookie. Wait, girl, you better tell the truth. Tell the truth. One day I picked up a pack of gum just out of nowhere. Picked up a pack of gum. 
I'm walking to the car and I'm starting to think now, what made me just pick that pack of gum up? Erica says, yep, girl, one recent couple. Wait, oh, I got to tell you this other story. This is going to be so funny. Okay. I'm walking out the store and I'm thinking, now, wait a minute. What made me just pick that gum up? Well, it's sugar free. There's no calories or carbs in it. But then I started thinking, okay, now remember, you had an issue with gum. You could chew up a lot of gum. Now, gum might not be your thing, and that's fine. But for me, I had an issue with gum. And I thought, well, why would I be chewing something and I'm not eating it for nourishment? So I had to make the decision to give that gum to my goddaughter really quickly. Why? Because I didn't want to be chewing and not consuming, not eating food, not eating nourishment for my body. That was my thing. And I haven't bought a pack since. And I don't intend on buying a pack. Why? Because I had an issue. All right. Ah, this is so good. Girl, I didn't know I had an issue like this, but all right. I had these starlight mints. Oh, my stars. The starlight mints, right? And I went through the kitchen. I grabbed a handful of land. Yep, Pepsi bread. That's on my list too, girl. I grabbed a hand of starlight mints because I was going to do some work in the computer, you know, on my at, at my office. And it wasn't time for me to drink anything. So surely I'm just going to suck on a man and get my breath fresh. It keeps your breath fresh, right? So anyway, I'm... <laughs> I'm sitting there. I pop one, and it's just so cool and crunchy. And I pop two. And, and before I know it, I had eaten through the handful. Then I'm going back uh, to the kitchen and grabbing some more. And I'm like, I, I didn't notice it until like day three. It took me three days to get it. And it dawned on me, okay, now I've gone through quite a few of these mints. Let me just take some time and look up the nutritional information, if you will. Girl, I saw the calories and the carbs. I said, this is foolishness. I said, I'm going to have to put these on my do not touch non-negotiable list. Why? Because I didn't handle them very well. I didn't before. Now, remember, that could be a very... um good key as to what to put on your list. What is it that you couldn't handle before? One of my sisters said Reese cups. Yep. I, I couldn't do it either. Cookies. Yep. That's one of mine too. Bread. Certain breads. The, the, the bread basket at Olive Garden. The bread basket at, 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 at what's that other place? Red Lobster. Yep. Mm -mm. Nope. I ain't doing it. Why? I didn't handle that before. So what would make me think I would be on this side of the fence? And oh, I can have a biscuit or two or three. I'm going to take a few home. And next thing you know, I've eaten all those up. And next thing you know, I'm spiraling out of control again. Let me get to some other notes. Resetting your automatic defaults. Automatic defaults have to do with the things we automatically do. Okay, Stephanie, one of the things that I did concerning the holidays, handling the holidays and the automatic defaults, this was so funny. I went to my mom's house for Christmas, and I knew I'd eaten something earlier, and she didn't have any saucers. I, I couldn't find one. So I got a little bitty top, a little bitty lid all that was from somebody's Tupperware. I'm not sure. It was really small. And I just got little portions on that. And it was so funny. Cherry Pepsi was mine too, Juanita. That's on my list too. Hey, um, I ate from that little bitty lid. It was so funny. And my mom was like, wow, you're really taking this seriously. So I, I, I on purpose chose the best things that I wanted instead of getting everything. And I sat down, I enjoyed conversations a lot more than the food. And I, I, I don't even think I, I, I took some Tupperware with me, you know, to bring some home because I really wanted to focus on the relationships and not on what was going on around the kitchen or the food table. All right, so let's get, let me go on to the next one. All right, automatic defaults. Remember, now we have to reset our automatic defaults. What are the things that you automatically do? Let me check my time. My son is supposed to be coming by here to pick up some equipment for our business, and I don't want him to disturb us. No, mm-mm. Okay. 
What is it that you automatically do when you're sad, when you're upset, when you're nervous, when you're depressed? Mine was, remember I just talked about it, getting in peppermints. Next thing I know, I go through 25. I'm going to tell on myself, maybe 15, 20 peppermints in three days. They're so stinking small, but they were so stinking sweet, but they were so stinking dangerous. And am I going to miss them? I might. But are they worth giving up for my sanity and for me not to roll back into that state of being out of control? Yes, they're worth it. I, I have to. It's not It's not worth the spiraling out of control. All right, number four, family systems and the holidays. Remember, my sisters, you're changing. Your family system may not be. So that being the case, when you come around family gatherings, period, you might freak people out. Not only family gatherings, but also work gatherings, workplaces, friendships may start to suffer. All those things start to suffer or change and shift because you're changing. Because you are now the new person in the group. And because you're the new person in the group, people may not know how to relate to you. Everyone has a part in a group, in a, in a system, in a structure. A even in the workplace, everybody has a part. You have the funny one. You have the sweet one. You have the authoritarian person. You have the clown, if you will. Remember in school, the class clown? Anyway, everybody has these roles and these parts. When you change, your role change, and the way people respond to you change also. So they may not know how to relate to you. Number one, don't take it personal. Do not take it personal. It's just the way people are. But regardless to how they are, don't go changing to try to please anybody. Just be yourself. Be the new you. Erica says, yep, friends change. You find out who's threatened by your change. You're absolutely right. People are threatened by your change because they don't know. that they, they don't know how to change with you. So be patient. If they were meant to be your friends long term, they'll change. They'll shift. They'll, they'll, they'll grow to know the new you and you'll be okay. That's what I found out too. You have people that won't respond or won't say anything about your weight loss. I've, I've seen that quite a bit too. And that's happened to me too. Well, people will obviously, I mean, if you're going to be like 125 pounds smaller, it's different. You look different, right? But regardless of whether it's that much, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, it doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes when people don't know what to say, they don't say anything. So don't take it personally. Just keep going, growing, and grinding. That's what I'm talking about. Don't be afraid to share your story. Don't be afraid to share your story, but only to those who deserve to know your story, girl. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some love on that one right there. Because everybody don't deserve to know. Some people, you just need to tell them, oh, I'm eating better and I'm exercising. And let that be that. But those people who know your heart, who know who you are, who, who won't exploit that. Don't open yourself to being exploited on purpose. Don't do that. So only those who deserve to know your story, tell your story. Those who don't, you don't have to tell them your story. You don't have to give an explanation either. Just be who you are. Keep growing, going, and grinding. Shifting goals. Shifting goals. Why did you have the surgery? Isn't that a good question? Isn't that a good question about motives? To really understand, why did I have the surgery in the first place? Because something I've learned in a very short amount of time if I did this surgery just to lose the weight, I am going to be disappointed. Somebody asked me why. Why? Because the numbers aren't going to move fast enough. The numbers are going to stall. 
Can I get some hearts on that? The numbers are going to stall. The numbers are going to change. They're going to go up. They're going to go down. They're going to stay in one spot for a very long time. They may go up two pounds. They may go down two pounds. It's just the way the body is. The body is readjusting. Remember, it took you years to gain all of that weight. And for some reason, we want it all to be gone within five months. <laughs> it don't work like that. So while your mind is like, go, 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 your physiological makeup is saying, okay, hold up. Something is going on. That's what your body, that's what your, your systems are saying. Something's going on. Something's going on. And I need a little time to shift. I, I need a little time to adjust. Yep. Wanting to be pain free because I can testify to that just how much physically better i'm doing just physically overall energy so the reason why i said that if it was to lose weight only and the disappointment that comes because the numbers don't move fast enough was this process only about losing the weight or was it about getting who you were meant to be out Whew. i'm gonna say that again was this only about losing weight or was it about getting the person that you were meant to be out of this body, out into the open? We clothe ourselves. We hid ourselves with the extra weight. We couldn't be who we were truly meant to be because we were wearing clothes that were too big for us. We were wearing a coat of flesh that was too big for us. We are not our bodies. We live in our bodies, but we are judged so often for what our vehicles look like, for what our bodies look like. It told the world our relationship with ourselves. It told the world our relationship with our mental capacity. It told the world, oh my goodness, and it told me my inability to process my emotions. Girl, I ain't processed nothing. I just ate. <laughs> Who can testify? Feeling sad. Eat. Automatic default, right? Feeling sad. What did I do? I ate. Happy. What did I do? I ate. Sad. What did I do? I ate. Rejected. Ate. Lonely. Ate. Happy. Ate. No matter what it was, I did not learn how to process my emotions. But I'm learning to now. So I can walk out of that old standard. And live in this new standard of health, healing, well-being, my mind being healed and free and being excited about living. All right, let me turn the page. I only got a couple more to go, so just slow your roll. Hold on. It's Saturday night and we all on here. So obviously, we are not out somewhere. <laughs> so sorry for the interruptions. My husband keeps trying to call. Maybe I should just try to call him. Could you guys hang on a second? I'm so sorry. Hold up. Yeah, I'm doing a Facebook Live. That's okay. Is it an emergency? Okay. All right. I'll call you back. All right. Thanks. Bye. Girl, interrupting my call. Interrupting my Facebook Live. But that's my sweetheart. He's on the road, so I had to answer that. Okay. <laughs> temptations. All right. So we talked about temptations. That's in a video, too. How temptations are actually there to make us stronger. We thought temptations was to put us down, right? Nope. It's to make you stronger. So what is that thing constantly coming up against you? What is the thing you have to stand up to? What is the thing you have to stand up to Call the brat? back here and tell the brat sit down shut up we're not doing that sit down shut up you're not having that our old mentality wants to have a fit in the middle of myers how many can attest that it does something to their skin to see an eight-year-old 
with a baba in their mouth and screaming and yelling. Or let me ask this question. How many of us moms had kids like that? Oh, I had a, I had a brat for a little while. Mm-hmm. Until he finally got the message, but he's an adult now. Praise the Lord. But he was a brat for a while. And I'm like, what is up with this kid? He has everything he needs. And he is having a fit. That's how our old mentality can be. It's the old mentality fighting against the new that's bringing the temptation. So you have to decide. Get your list together. Tell the brat, we are not having this. We are not doing this. And I don't care if I have to chew my fingernail off. We're not doing it. Sooner or later, the temptation lifts and you will have peace. That's what I'm talking about. Having peace. A ain't, ain't that really what we want? Don't we really just want some peace in our life? Situations don't have to change. But can I at least have some peace while God is working out some stuff? Can I have peace up in here? <laughs> Let's just get to a place of peace about some stuff. Get your list together. It is almost a new year. Don't go into the new year without your non-negotiable list. Because you guess what? Them things is on the other side of December 31st. They're going to be knocking at your door. Hello, temptation here. Let me in. So we're just going to have to decide. We're going to have to decide some things. Okay. Healing for the mind, or I call it head healing. Girl, you got to get your head healed. We've got to focus on healing the thought process. We've got to focus on that. The body will take care of itself. I've, I'm learning that. The body knows when to lose weight. As long as you're, you're getting your protein, you're getting your, your fluids in, you're getting your workouts in, you're rising and you're grinding, the scale will start to move again. Don't worry about the scale. Skip the scale. The scale is not a determination of your self-worth. Get off the scale. Whew. I'm going to say that again. Get off the scale. Now get this. We didn't weigh ourselves that much when I, we were 300 pounds. We were 250, 275. We wasn't on the scale all the time. Now why are we going to be on this side and we weighing every other day? We go take a number two. Then we get on the scale. What is that? Why are we looking to these numbers to validate us when the numbers are only an indicator of the gravitational pull on our body mass and uh, relationship to the earth. That's what the number is. The number says per square inch, this is how much force gravity has to use to keep you grounded on the earth. That's it. That is all. And we have built a whole culture around that stupid freaking number. How much, how much force does gravity have to use to keep me held down to the earth? And we've built a culture, we've built a system, a multi-billion dollar system on that number alone. And that make that kind of pisses me off. I don't know about nobody else. But this revelation and realization that, are you kidding me? That's all my weight is. It's, it's, it's the gravitational pull per square inch in relationship to the earth and my body. And I have judged myself. I've criticized myself. I've lowered my own self-worth. Not even having self-worth. Because of what this stupid number says. Are you kidding me? Are you stinking kidding me? Mm -hmm, we sure did. But guess what? We get to change. We get to change it. We get to change what it means. So, sisters, get off the scale. Get off the scale and focus on your head healing. Now, some of you guys, you've already done the work. And us newbies that's been in here a year or less, we're following after your tracks. And we need your information. We need your posts to tell us, this is what I did. This is what I did. Some of you guys that may still be struggling, I'm, I'm just going to share some stuff with you. Why, why, what is it in me that drove me to eat? Because guess what? If the seed, this is going to bless you. Oh, please go back and watch this and write some notes down. If the seed is not removed, it will always reproduce. 
I need the fan on that one. That one was pretty good. All right, let me. Oh, Jesus. Girl, we got the fan on 75, and I'm about to just be done with it. Oh, I'm going to say that again. If the seed, if the core seed, if the core reason that pushed the obesity, the core reason that pushed the eating is not destroyed, isn't healed, isn't delivered, guess what, baby, and it stays there? We all know the eating is going to come back. Why? Because the seed always reproduces. That's why we can lose. That's why we have so many sisters, so many, so many people that we've known that have had this wonderful procedure. And guess what? A few years out, they gain all the weight back. And we're looking like, what the heck happened? Because the seed was not dealt with. We can't just have the weight loss and not deal with the mindset that produced it. Oh, my goodness. We can't have the weight loss and not deal with the mindset that produced the obesity in the first place. If we do and the seed remains, it's going to reproduce sooner or later. You may have success. We might have success for years. And guess what, baby? Somebody to ask me what? Just because I'm talking to you, that don't mean I'm not fighting. That don't mean that I don't have my books in front of me, my Bible and, and, and my journals. And, and I'm talking to God and looking through different books and self-healing books and wondering, help me to remove this seed. Help me to continue to dig this lie up out of my core. Because if it's not dealt with, the weight is going to come back. Why? Because the seed that held it in place is still there. Yep, yeah, Erica, that's it. We're working to pluck our seed out too. Pluck out. Now, let me tell you something. My son is coming in the back door. Hold on a second. Cody, oh, I'm on a Facebook Live. The information, <laughs> the information, would you just go? Just, just go. Please go. Go. Um, the information is right there. Okay, love you. Okay. <laughs> Y'all bearing with me with a few a few different dis uh interruptions tonight. Where's the phone? Oh. <laughs> Here's the phone. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm I'm trying to be professional. It is not working out. <laughs> you gotta be professional. Just be real. Hi, Cody. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Girl, he gone out the door. Oh, my Lord. Oh, it's just too funny. That was the brat. That was the brat in my life when he was a little boy. Oh, he's sweet now, but that boy, no, he could scream. He was a trip. Anyway, <laughs> we got to deal with the core reason. Oh, and I have a dog in here, too, in his crate. And uh, anyway, I'm going to be done. I'm, I'm going to be done, and then I'm going to let him out because he's not going to ruin this. Nope, I'm going to finish up. Okay. Listen, <laughs> the core reason we have to discover that, and it's gonna take some time. Oh, take a deep breath. It's just going to take some time to figure that out. One of my core reasons was abandonment. I never knew who my dad was uh that that core sense of never knowing left there was an emptiness that I tried to fill with food, but it only came through discovery it only came through really starting to map some things out and 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 find out when was it i was most prone to overeat and it was usually when i was feeling abandoned or rejected because of something those core reasons how do you remove the seed you remove the seed by studying you have to you remove the seed also by getting to know yourself Writing down your triggers. What are some of the things that trigger you? Why do they trigger you? One of my triggers was being alone. I hated to be alone. I hated to be alone in the house. Because I equated loneliness with emptiness. And emptiness always needed to be filled. Is that right? Yeah, that's the right grammatical term. So I equated loneliness with emptiness, emptiness with needing to be filled, needing to be filled with getting food to fill that space. I was trying to fill, fill this, fill the heart. You can't fill the heart. 
That's one of the ways to get to the seed. Knowing yourself. There's so many great books out there on inner healing. Of course, those of us who are on here that are Christians, that's a great the ultimate place to start with the Father in prayer and asking questions. What is it in me? What's going on in me? Why do I feel so freaked out when I'm told no? What is it that freaks us out with being told no? Why do we think we have to be grown? Why can't anybody tell us anything? Isn't that what's wrong with our American culture? Nobody wants to be instructed. Everybody wants to do their own thing. And we have utter chaos in so many areas of this country. Hey, shut up. I just told the dog to shut up. I'm sorry. <laughs> His name is Nico. I might show him to you before we done. Anyway. All right. I went over some eating tips. Another great one was body image, understanding that we are not our bodies, we live in our bodies, and not allowing the numbers to dictate to you. That's a great place. Coming out of regret. This is a good one. Now, those of us who are newbies, there are some guys who are going to watch this video later. You're new to it. They say one of the first things that will happen is that you'll regret having the surgery because of the downtime, because of the recovery. And guess what, y'all? You got to be patient with yourself. This is a major surgery. You have had either your, uh, your, your intestines rerouted, your stomach made the size of a golf ball, or your stomach made the size of a banana. That is a big deal. And even though in our minds we're like, lose weight, lose weight, feel great. I'm going to be off work for two days and I'm going to be back. Well, your body is like, hold on, girlfriend. I just had something major <laughs> happen. <laughs> and I'm just going to slow down for a little bit. Your body needs time to adjust. Your body needs time to rest and recuperate. And one of the things that can happen is falling into the pit of regret. I'm going to let you know something right here. Regret is a waste of time. Regret, I, ref I absolutely refuse to regret. Because I had this massive surgery did. And I can't have it undone. Oh my goodness. They've taken out 80% of my stomach. You guys have had things rerouted or you're going to if you're still in process. And guess what? You can't do nothing about it. I can't go back and say, hey, you know what? I've changed my mind. Put the 80% back in. Please. That's not going to happen. So what is it I have to do? I have to put my big girl pajamas on. My big girl panties on. Get a grip. And now do the things that I need to do to have a healthy, full life. Now I can do something about it. But part that's part of the adjustment. I'm regretting. What are you regretting it for? You can't do anything about yesterday. You can't do anything if you've had the surgery done already. Regress is a waste of time. You're going to end up spinning your wheels, wasting time in self-pity. Instead of finding out, okay, you know what? What is it, what is it that I need to do? To have the best life. What vitamins I need to take. What nutritional information I need to get. So that I can feel my absolute best. Especially if you're not feeling your best. And you know there's some components that are missing. There's so much information uh, shared here on this site. And so many other sites. And if you need to contact somebody else. Contact another place. A doctor, a nutritionist. Somebody that will help you get on the right track. Get on the right path. And say, okay, you know what? I'm not too grown to learn some new information. Because I can't do anything about it. I've had the bypass done. I've, I've had the duodenum switch done. I've had the gastric sleeve done. My, my, my intestines are rerouted. I, I will have digestive issues the rest of my life unless I do the things that's necessary. Does that mean drinking smooth, smooth move tea every day? Then so be it. Let's do what we need to do to have a good, healthy, full, incredible life. Take all the vitamins you need to, whether you need to get the liquids or the chewables or, 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 or whatever you need to do. Just do it. 
Don't become complacent. Complacency is a dangerous thing. Complacency is a dangerous thing. Don't get complacent about it and think, oh, well, you know what, girl? <laughs> Ain't nothing happened to me. When well, you have guys on this site, on a part of this Facebook group that I tell you, I've been, I look, I'm, I've been here. I'm, I'm 20 years out. I'm 15 years out. I didn't take my vitamins forever. It, it, it will last, but only for so long. Then your body will start telling the tale. Your teeth to fall out. Your bones to get brittle. But we're over here on this side. Girl, ain't nothing happened to me. I ain't take my vitamins in a year and I feel great. Well, hold on, baby, and keep on living. Because I'm pretty sure some of those guys who are a part of this group can tell you something. That, yeah, that's good for a while. Yes, your body will compensate. But your body will start stealing the calcium from your bones in order to nourish it. It will start stealing from other parts of your body. It will start stealing from your teeth. Turn your blood system stealing from your teeth. What kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> Take the vitamins. Find a way to do it, sisters come out of regret there's no need to regret we have had this opportunity to live an incredible life to be a part of an incredible family called the bariatric community baby we get to live a different life we get to realize some of the 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 hard things the dna things the seed things that have happened to us some of us have went through horrible abuses in our lives that planted seed cores in us that that caused us to reach to food to try to fill that void and fill that empty spot and now we get to say you know what i need to figure something else down Miss Luann, I'm so happy that you don't regret it. Only one week out, 11 pounds. That's what I'm talking about. Keep the right perspective. And I guarantee you, from right here where I'm sitting at now, the right perspective will bless you on your journey. And I'm sure some of the guys that are many, many years out will tell you, yep, yeah, the right perspective. That's it. It's not the end. You newbies, you are going to feel better. Just hold on. Let your body recuperate. You've had massive surgery, baby. Just relax. Let your energy build back up. Your hair falls out. Guess what, baby? It's going to come back. I was just so blessed. I didn't lose any of my hair. My hair. I think, I don't know if it was the vitamins I'm taking or what, but it feels like that baby, I don't know, that baby alive doll or whatever, that hair grows out the top, but I did cut it short and it's more coarse than it's ever been. Anyway, I'm rambling on y'all. I'm sorry. Anyway, I just wanted to come on and share this before the new year come in. My name is Lacey. I am uh, almost seven months out and a few days. I'll be seven months out. Oh, that's so incredible. I had my surgery June 6th of 2017. June 6th of this year. Uh, I lost some weight before that surgery, and sitting here now, I'm officially 126 pounds down. I got about another 30 pounds to go to get to my goal, and that's my desire, regardless of how long it takes to get there. It took me a long time to gain it. I need to be patient with losing it because this process cannot be about losing the weight only. It has to be about getting the person that you were meant to be out. I had the gastric sleeve done, a wonderful program here in Benton Harbor, Michigan, over in St. Joe, Michigan. Absolutely incredible. You guys have an incredible New Year's Eve celebration. Get your list together. Quit playing like you don't need a list. You ain't got to write it down. Some do. But if you don't have to write it down, have it up here. Potato chips. That's an absolute no. Cookies. Mm-mm. Gum for me? No, I can't have it. Uh, gum might be okay for you, but it's not for me. Anyway, my name is Lacey. I have fruit, and I want to give you some seed. Take this seed. Use it. I hope it blessed you. It's been such an incredible journey, and I enjoy so much talking to you guys because, believe it or not, it's helping me so much. And these same principles, I have to live by, too, and that's my desire. I have fruit in my life. 
the non-negotiable list works. That is a definite staple in my life. That list works. Commit to your list. Commit to the amount of days you want to work out. Commit to your food a menu, commit, make a commitment to it and hold yourself responsible. Hold yourself accountable for your own list. We're not babies. We don't need anybody babying us. But if somebody's going to tell you something to help you, take it. Take it and use it. Consider it. Think, maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe I do need to consider taking vitamins. Look it up. Study it. We all have biology, right? Your body will start stealing from your bones, stealing from your teeth, stealing from certain areas. Anyway, girl, I'm starting to ramble on, and I don't want to ramble on. Anyway, I have fruit in my life, and it's my desire to give you seed. You guys be blessed. I will see you again maybe next week. Who knows if I'm able to dig out from <laughs> around all this snow. Girl, it's snowing real bad. I don't even think I'm going to be able to go to church tomorrow. I just don't think I can do it. <laughs> I will just have to see. We're under a storm warning here. Another six to nine inches of snow on top of the 12 we already have. You got to love Michigan. What do you say? Anyway, you guys have an incredible even, evening. Enjoy your New Year's celebration. Be safe. Be safe on the roads and have a great time with your family. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me and I appreciate all your love and support and I will be back again soon yep you can count on it because there's more stuff I got to share I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure along the way or oh, if you got any questions put it in the comments and I'll try to address some the next time if you have anything so anyway that's my desire I love you guys you have a great evening and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.